Judson Irrigation. They'll never forget you. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. This is 93.7 The Ticket. Look at me short. Look at me short. I'm the captain now. Three-time national champion, Vershawn Jackson. Touchdown. Vershawn Jackson. Number 34 gets the touchdown. Terrell Farley. Terrell Farley. Terrell Farley. Defending Terrell Farley. Who last week in his first start was a holy terror. Number 43. And Jake Bakovic. I popped a few cats. They said that Bach got some game, man. Coming at you live from the Koppel Chevrolet GMC Studios in the heart of Lincoln, America. On air and online at theticketfm.com. Powered by Bauer. Here he is, Vershawn Jackson. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Nice Welcome to the Captain Show. 93.7 the ticket. We on 1040 O Street and it's Bach in the black shirt today. The captain is headed to Louisiana to see Mickey Joseph's spring game. So it's Bach in the black shirt. We're gonna rock the mic all night. And we got something special for you at the beginning of the show. This is something that probably happened. Well, it did happen. Uh I don't know how many years ago. It's gotta be about 30, 28. 28 years. Yeah. 28 years ago, April. 18, 1996. Brooke Barringer passed away in a plane accident. Um, he was flying a plane and a wind tug it or something happened, but he passed away. Um, Brooke was also training for the NFL. He was going to he possibly get drafted. Um, great teammate. Um, one of those guys who always had a smile on his face, you know, and asked for tickets. So, you know, Brooke <laughs> probably wanted 20 tickets a game. So, you know, but, you know, he was a great teammate, a great athlete, could throw and run the ball. Uh, didn't really look like he can – to I scrimmaged him. That's when I knew he could play. Mm. But, you know, you have to – you know, like I say, everything is proven on the field, and Brooke proved everything on the field. He proved it the year before that against Miami in the Orange Bowl, and he relieved Tommy for a couple of series when they switched in and out. Tommy was hurt. But Brooke was a good teammate, you know. So we want to dedicate this song right here. To Brooke Barringer, rest in peace. Well, I came up from Goodland, Kansas, I turned 18 today. I'm college bound for Lincoln, Nebraska's where I'll stay. It's been my dream all my life to play football on this field. And if I ever get the chance, I'll make you this day. Well, I work hard, I'll do my part. You won't hear me complain. I'll never go down easy. I swear I'll go my way. I hear them, Mr. Osborne, I'll do anything to play. And it sure would be an honor, sir, to call you coach someday. There you have it. That was from Sawyer Brown, of course, back, uh, back in, uh, I think he made the song pretty much immediately after or shortly after the the accident but good song yeah yeah it's uh it, it's it, it's a kind of an emotional story every year of course the the statue outside of, of memorial stadium where uh coach osborne i think said if you if you're gonna put a statue of me make sure to include brooke in there uh and so uh it you know it will always go down and um 
you know, Nebraska lore, but uh, it is, it's, it's always a tough day and, and it's, it's crazy for, you know, you, you talk to any fan. It's, it's, there's so many moments, you know, over a course of your, your life. I was just talking to my dad about when the moon landed. And of course we can all remember September 11th. No, most Nebraska fans can remember where you were kind of when you heard the news about Brooke Berenger. I mean, it, it was, it was that moving of, of a story and, and obviously a, a loss for the football team. And, um, just crazy. And that's, that's why I, I'm glad you're here Terrell, to, to kind of, um, to be able to talk about him and, and, and kind of share your own stories. And, you know, I was, I'm always, you know, you, you kind of think about it now, um, with the NFL draft now a week away, uh, just, you know, you just can remember he was that close to, to living on his dream, but you know, I know that one of his dreams was to, to become a pilot and to fly out there. Yeah. And so, um, you know, in a way he also passed away doing what he loves. So, you know, I, I, I suppose at least there's that there's, um, but you just wonder, you know, this world feels like, you know, it, <laughs> maybe you just wonder what the next next chapter would have been for Brooke. Yeah, I mean, everybody want to wonder because he he had a he had a, a good a good Nebraska career, you know, a backup a little came to be a starter. I mean, when we needed Brooke, Brooke would do it. So and and he's a great thrower, but he also is a good runner. So I would consider him as a dual threat quarterback. So you know, but. He, he, he's a better passer than he is a runner. But the thing is, you know, we lost a good person early. And, um, you know, I I seen his mom probably about two, three years ago. She still comes down. And his sister, they came down to a function we had. So it's great that Nebraska still is involved with the Barringer family. You know, he was he would probably be remembered more than anybody else besides Coach Osborne or Bob Devaney. And, you know, he is just – one of those things that happened that just somebody gone too early and gone too soon, but you know, just it's a sad situation, but you know, yeah, things like that happen. Well, and of course the Nebraska family too. I mean, I, I, I was a kid, so I, I wasn't really aware of the, of the Brooks situation, but um, you know, just a couple of years ago working in media when uh, Sam Foltz passed away and, and, you know, so, you know, that's another just outstanding guy. There's not a negative word to be said around the team or, you know, just around the fan base about either of those guys. And so you now sometimes it just feels like it happens to the best of us. Uh, and, and, and those have been, you know, big losses and, and, and tough, uh, tough to get around for, for you, Terrell, obviously, um, you know, I know they, they kind of did the honor at the spring game. You kind of think about, about that as well. Was that, was that was the spring game right around the corner? Because I mean, again, yeah, timeline think, now. Yeah, I think it was that weekend. Yeah. Um, I didn't play in the spring game, so of course I had on number eighteen shirt, cut off sleeve. Yeah. Show, showing my pecs, but um, <laughs> but yeah, we wore play. Uh, we wore um eighteen. We had black, black and white. And matter of fact, Ryan Hale posted some on um, um Twitter. If you know Ryan Hale, go mm -hmm. to his page. He has a a black eighteen. Still, he still has the same shirt that we was given but um yeah i remember it just like yesterday i mean yeah. it's just like it's just it just happened but i can tell you this it's a kid on this team right now i think that probably can be that kind of reminds me of this brooke behringer situation mm -hmm. you know if, if you think about it and, and and he seems like a good kid and, and everybody's rooting for this kid but heinrich Harburg, yeah. i think he 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 can solidify his legacy here if he can you know becoming a starter and then losing your spot the next year. I mean, this kid still has his, you know, he still does anything for the team. You know, he still posts on X. He still posts on Facebook. Uh, he's not a kid that's going to give up. And Brooke never gave up. So, yeah. you know, I, I think this kid right here, I mean, it, if if you fix his mechanics and he could throw better, he could be a starter, you know, because it, he still has that 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 running thing for him. And if he learned how to pitch the ball, you still could dibble dabble in the speed option, you know, yeah. just in the option, just in the shotgun formation. You don't have to get into true, true, um, tight, too tight or, or, or one, three backs or two backs. But if you give him an opportunity to, to get outside the box, then he's going to create havoc and, and learn how to pitch the ball. And then his mechanics working with this new quarterback coach. I mean, one thing I don't want to do is just going to say Dylan Riles is the star. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say that. I don't want that to happen yet because n nobody is ready yet. I don't I don't think these kids know enough to to grasp that quarterback spot just in 15 or a month. So, yeah. That's well, one 
Yeah. Right. Like I said, it is it is amazing. Obviously, you know, we heard from Mike Man or your whole from anybody that, that goes to practice just to watch Dylan and Riola operate and um, you know, pre-snap stuff kind of look like an NFL quarterback rather than a guy fresh out of college or out of high school. So, you know, he's 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 not your typical guy, but I mean, we'll see. Well, I, I I do think that you're right uh, as far as is is appreciating Heinrich Harburg because especially today in the transfer portal era, I mean, if he wanted to start in the MAC at quarterback, I mean, he could have transferred. You know, and and you know, I'm not trying to downplay the MAC, but he's got five wins in in you know in Big Ten action. Yeah. We, we sit there and we go, well, they just couldn't find anything that could work at quarterback, and you know he would be sitting there going, well, he won five games with me starting. Um, but it, it, and so he returns, and you know, obviously is is being replaced, and and as far as um you know the fanfare goes, kind of being overlooked probably this spring, and and, and everybody wants to see the new freshman, but. Um, that is a, a very good point to say, you know, what, what an absolute team player um, to stick around, especially in this in this day and age. And I can't wait to see what they draw up for him. I don't know what his his long term goals are, but obviously he's athletic enough that you'd like to see him get a shot at, at the NFL level. But he could be a Taysom Hill type uh, yeah. situation here where you, you just, you know, you blind him up on the field and the, the offense or the defense has no clue what's coming. Yeah. I, I believe so. And, and my question is, when we come back, I want to know where does Carter Nelson fit in here now? Mm. Are we going to redshirt him, let him get bigger, or, or are we going we gonna to try to squeeze him in? Because the, the, the landscape of college football is that nobody probably need to redshirt anymore because if you do, you give the kid an opportunity to transfer. So, you, you know, shit, college just be straight four years and get him out of there. You know, <laughs> I, I I believe that. Bro. Yeah, huh. if you, I'm just saying. I agree with, I wouldn't go that far, but I do agree with you, like, stick, like caring so much that, okay, we're going to need four years out of this guy. You can't, you can't, you can't plan four years out of anybody yeah. anymore, really. You, you can't. Look at the guys who leave in Colorado now. Year to year. One yeah, they year. 14, 14 Buffaloes in the portal this week. Yeah. My goodness. Five, one five star. Yeah. Okay. This is the ticket 93.7, the captain show, the fastest two hours, and radio has begun. Ready, set, go, pow. 93.7, the ticket. Keep summer green with Judson Bylene and Judson Irrigation. More than 40 years ago, Judson Irrigation started taking in orphans. Lawn sprinkler systems installed by a quickie, cheapy summer job, install them and forget them outfit long forgotten. Call Judson Irrigation. They'll never forget you. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or JudsonIrrigation.com. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402-466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Spring is here, and Acres is offering special financing on select new John Deere lawn tractors and zero-turn mowers. Visit your nearest Acres store and test drive all the latest John Deere turf equipment and attachments. And for a limited time, with the purchase of a new John Deere mower, get up to $200 to apply to the steel power tool of your choice. From trimmers to chainsaws, gas, or electric, Acres is your home for steel products and service. Offer expires April 30, 2024. Subject to approved credit by John Deere Financial. The Omaha Supernovas are back in action this Saturday, April 20th, versus the San Diego Mojo at CHI Health Center in Omaha. The Mullen Motors pregame show with Derek Pearson and Renee Saunders starts at 5 p.m. with first serve at 6. Make sure to tune in to the next Ag Appraisal Realty postgame show right after the match ends. 
Catch all the action on your flagship station, 93.7 The Ticket, and statewide on the Supernova's radio network. Join us each Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon for Youth Football 101 with Tank Perry of the Nebraska Red Wolves of 7-on-7 Football. The future of the sport depends on the foundation set at a young age. Hear those stories and more each Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon here on 93.7 The Ticket. I see the future in our public school classrooms every day. I'm Jenny Benson, president of the Nebraska State Education Association. I also see how critically important parent and community support is to our students' success. Support your public schools, get involved, form a business school partnership, or become a school volunteer. Great schools and great communities work hand in hand. Sponsored by the Nebraska State Education Association, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association in this station. On the block with Strick and Austin. When you're when you're in New York, Nick, in New York, I mean, you're talking about, you see mafioso types. <laughs> you go into a restaurant and you would literally eat. Hey, come on over here. You know, they, they, you know, I don't know how to say it. I don't got the accent, but they would say, come, come, speak, come on, come over. Have a drink on me. And what are you going to do? Say no? You, you not say you no, don't say no to the drink. <laughs> you say no. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. The captain, Vershawn Jackson. Mike Minner, what's up, bro? When you look at Dylan, you're looking at quarterbacks that kind of come around once every 20 years. And this is a kid I'm looking at, I don't know how old he is, 17, 18 years old. And he is already directing things that a 17, 18-year-old kid should not even know. Changing line protection. Okay, you guys, I don't know where we've been two weeks of practice. Come on, man. We got guys in the National Football League that can't do that. Back with Vershawn Jackson, powered by Bauer, on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Yeah, go Bach. Go Bach. I, I like saying your name better than Rico's. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rico told me. <laughs> yeah. I told him yesterday. I said, hey, man, this show, can't wait for Bach to get back. So, yeah, <laughs> my partner's in crime back. But it's back today, 93.7, the captain show. We are powered by Bauer, Bauer, infrastructure, Bauer, underground, rent, excavating. excavating. Big shout out to Slim and the guys out there working for Bauer Underground. Oh, man, it's like 45 degrees out there today. Yeah. yeah. Lincoln weather, man. I, I hate this weather. We we'll just need to get like 85 degrees and just be that way. See, I'm the opposite. I love rainy days. I wish the the fall and the spring would last a little longer. It seems to be either summer or winter around here. But uh, no, no, no. I, don't mind I, it. I, I hate rainy days. You do because, like, if it rain, it was raining hard right now. I probably would have went to sleep and didn't get up. Yeah. So I, I worked hard last night. I worked too hard last night. I did eight buildings. So so you're you're admitting you sleep better in the rain at least. Well, I sleep better. I, I don't know, Bob. I, I don't know if I'm a vampire. Or, yeah, I, I pass out. And rain is sleeping yeah. weather. Yeah, yeah. It's good sleeping weather. That's, That's right. all rain is. <laughs> you know, if, if like I used to do construction in in the rain days, I used to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, rain. Come on, rain. Then it don't rain. Come on, rain. Come on, rain. Then it don't rain. Then you end up being <laughs> so you you don't come prepared for work, and then the next thing you know, it don't rain, and you at work all day. I yeah. hate them days. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I like. I, I always just love the rain and the thunderstorms and stuff, and going out there and that. But uh, you know, as a homeowner, you you learn to hate rain because it's, I'm a summer guy. I'm a, like if like today, I felt like if it was like 75 degrees, I'd probably go somewhere and get me a pack of pork chops and throw them on the truck. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, it's not grilling weather to it's, rain. It's, and, and, no, 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 <laughs> grilling weather. No, 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 no. I, I have cooked a brisket in probably ten about ten degrees. Have you? Yeah, yeah, you'll do it. You'll 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 brave the elements. For yeah, it. for that for that. <laughs> well, it was Christmas or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it was Christmas. So a brisket, you have to go out there in the cold and and battle to just pull some pellets in it. You ain't got to do yeah. that, but lift the top up, <laughs> pour some pellets in it, and run back in the house. Yeah. So <laughs> make it sound like it's yeah, a make big it battle, so, yeah, really. It's, just, it sound like a hard job, but hey, yeah, you just bundle up and go out there, pour some pellets in it, and turn right back around. <laughs> I was gonna say you you got to earn that name too, grills. But yeah, after you yeah. told the whole story, it's like, well, maybe not. As yeah. Much, but <laughs> now charcoal, you're not gonna cook no charcoal in the, oh, no. unless you're in the inside, and probably you're gonna probably die or it's a smoke <laughs> cup. So that's I, right. I, I see people in, in the neighborhood that puts their grill right in the front of the garage. Like, 
I'm not, I'm a back porch cooker. Yeah. I don't want to show everybody my technique. So, you know, it, like, just let the neighborhood smell it. Don't let them know where it's coming no, from. He, when you, when you cook out in the front yard, you, you get un, unwanted visitors. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. Oh man, Derek down there cooking. I'm for the stop by his house. Maybe he got a piece of meat. I'm hungry. <laughs> that's right. You know, and especially where I'm from, if they see you cooking, they stop it. Mm. They stop it. And they every, do that too. You walking around the neighborhood. Oh, I smell something. I'm going to go nah, over, I don't, over there. No, no, you don't no, 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 no. I go home and get my own stuff prepared to get ready. Yeah. Take but a minute to turn that grill on. That's it. <laughs> Two minutes to post the pellets in it. Yeah. About 15 minutes to heat up and get that meat seasoned up right. Hey, then you cook it. See, I was That's talking it. to my, my friend. He, sa- he says that your Traeger is... So it is too good of technology to be bragging about what you get off of there because it's easy. He thinks the trigger's too easy. I don't care what he thinks. Tell him, <laughs> tell him, <laughs> tell him to I buy. I think he's jealous yeah, of your grill yeah, is what yeah. it is. Yeah. T- tell him to buy one and experience <laughs> yeah. it. It'll yeah. change his whole life. Yeah. You know, like, look, if he got one for a gift, he would take it and probably run with it because of the trigger. They they good. It, it's it's more than just a trigger. Trigger got another series or two up that that I seen a guy. Spent thirty five hundred dollars for a trigger. Mm. This thing had everything. Jeez, everything. It better, yeah. <laughs> it should have had a battery operated. It, it, you know, but then the ones where you had the Wi Fi, the Wi Fi temperature thing, you could turn oh, it yeah. up or turn it down. See, I don't have that one. Yeah, I just got one. You could just stick the temperature and then it's digital. But hey, yeah, That's I don't care. Nice. Yeah, I, I like to be in front of the meat. I mean, I, I mean, I know when my stuff is ready. Yeah, you know, expect not really with the trigger because you have to learn it first. So it, it cooks more like a it, it, it it's a lot more like a bake with a crisp on it. Mm. So it's like baked meat, like chicken is. It, it doesn't be like grilled chicken. It be like it's like baked chicken. It, it tastes like baked chicken, but huh. it it get it, it's good though. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love baked chicken. I'm well, like, it, like it, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it cooks like baked chicken, hmm. but you know, but that's the way it, I mean, it cooks. But it, it cooks good. Yeah. But sometimes I like different, like, I like chicken and, let's say, chicken and hamburgers on the trigger. Now, if I'm going to cook ribs or pork chops, I'm going to put them on the grill. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's different things I like to cook. Yeah. Just keep keep your bag of instant charcoal and a bag of pellets, and you're ready to rock for the whole summer. <laughs> are you are you against any form? Like, I know some people, if they're charcoal, they don't like gas. Are you, you, you like all, all of them, right? Huh? Well, I don't like gas. You don't like gas? Huh? I don't yeah. do propane. Okay, yeah. Okay. I think that's one of the weakest grilling things ever right <laughs> there, probably ever invented. Mm. You know, propane gas, you know, to cook. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm just not a fan of that. Yeah, I, I was going to say, usually, if you're, you if would you're ne- a griller, I, you'll I, have I would a, never, an opinion. I would never cook on a propane gas grill. Mm. I kick it over and throw it in the trash can. <laughs> Even if somebody tried to give it to me, I said, take that and put it on the curve mm. with you. You're going you're gonna to run <laughs> Hank Hill out of business. But <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> propane and propane accessories. <laughs> That's right. <yeah. laughs> Not for you. Uh, Eric says, whoa, 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 Terrell. Hold up. The propane hate. You're losing me. See, uh, he's he might be a, a pure propane guy. He might be Hank Hill type. Well, <laughs> my dad retired as a fireman, and then he then he drove a propane truck for like ten years. Mm. And and the thing about propane, if you're a propane tank driver, these people will bug the mess out of you. My dad was getting calls at five o'clock in the morning. Hey, I done ran out of uh, propane down here in Harris County. I need <laughs> you to come come fill the tank up. The money's up under the mat. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know so. <laughs> You know them them weird phone calls like that. Hey, I need some gas. You know, like it's like it's like that. I didn't. I thought he was a dope man because they said you know. But hey, he turned yeah, out yeah. he was selling propane. Hey, so, yeah, hey. illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah legal. Yeah, yeah, the legal gas. Yeah, so you, you know, I was just it just it, it just shocked me. Uh, Seven zero nine two says propane grills are outdoor ovens. That's his. That's his opinion. So fair enough. Uh, Notorious Bib by the way off the text line says fishing was good yesterday. Uh, before this cold front rolled in, so it looks like he sent us a. Oh, what is that about fifteen? Where, fish where does Notorious Bib stay at? I don't know. He does a lot of fishing though. We've, we've I hope he, able to see his fishing. is he close to Lincoln. He could be my fishing buddy this summer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I don't think the captain can fish. You know, he, he he talks too much. I I like it quiet when I fish. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you know, I, I don't talk. Yeah, I have my headphones on and I 
take and I'm also call myself two rods now. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I have a catfish rod and I have a regular rod. So mm. they call me two rods too. So two yeah. grills and two rods. <laughs> so two rods is uh that might be a popular guy at a certain uh, club. So <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Robbie and I was says I remember that day when we go back to talking about uh on Brooke Berger, of course, this being the the twenty eight year anniversary of his passing. So I remember that day I got home from playing basketball and heard the news. Fifty year old me shed some tears after hanging it and, and that doc the Big Ten Network put out not long ago got me too. That song is great when I listen to it often. Um so yeah, I mean there's been obviously a lot of different uh things done to to honor Brooke. Three one one nine uh wonders why one thing hasn't been done. He says, Why isn't Brooke's number retired? The actual number, it's not right saying anyone where 18 um you know, i have no idea that could be something they they, uh, they played with but it's i mean be a, it'd be a long time now after the after the fact to to go back and retire it now but that is that is interesting of course if they was going to do it they should have did it a long time ago right they yeah. should have did it probably the year after that or probably whenever but you know 28 years that whew, yeah i don't know that's kind of hard to go back and do now i don't know i don't know how they'll do that and of course, I mean, you, you see players like the this past year's Nebraska punter will wear eighteen to honor Brooke. So, um, you know, there, there's different ways. If that, at least there's there's a way to honor it as as a current player, I suppose, if you wear it. Uh, Gus Mohawk says, "What are some of the qu- closest quarterback battles in Husker history? There have been. We might have one on our hands here, and we've got uh, we've got plenty of uh, plenty of different ones to go back on. And Brooke and Tommy certainly was one of them. Uh, I I still would go back to." Um, Bobby Newcomb and, and Eric Crouch as a big yeah. one. I always remember Taylor Martinez coming out of uh, well, a little bit with Frankie London and Scott, but yeah. Frank, Frankie London didn't wear enough for, for that part. I think he was just too light, but Scott, you know, that was a little battle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, Taylor Martinez coming out of the, the Zach Lee, Cody green shuffle. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Uh, but then once they saw him on the field, they're like, oh, okay, well, that well, makes a had, little bit of sense. I think when Mika Joseph here, they had a good quarterback room. I think um, Keith McCant, yeah, you know he 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 came in and started, and I think he was the Big Eight Player of the Year when he took over. I I forgot who else was with that group, so it was Keith McCann and Mickey and somebody else. I can't get it right right now. I'm trying to think about it, but yeah. And as we uh, we go ahead and welcome in, uh, uh, well, I, I guess I don't recognize this guy. He's got a cowboy hat on. How's it going, DP? <laughs> I am uh, in full recovery. <laughs> um last night I had the uh the blessing and the the honor to uh MC the uh Lincoln Journal Star Choice Awards for 2024. Okay. And uh their theme was what uh, country western. Mm. And um let me tell you walking in the door, I had to explain to folks, you know, uh well black folks, we've been doing this cowboy thing for a minute. Uh, and I'm from Virginia, so boots and bolo ties is not strange to me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it was really cool. Um, one, uh, for our friends from UBT to sponsor the event. Uh, of course, our friends and family at, at Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, thank you to Sherry Dick Meyer, Ava Thomas for, um, one, trusting me with, with, uh, with their event. Uh, I want to say 200 awards plus. Wow. Um, and y'all know I had surgery on Monday, so, um, I had to have them numb my mouth so I could get through. Oh, really? Oh, this morning, last night, this morning was a whole thing. Mm. Um, but I went in and had them, uh, you know, I went through the pit crew and had them have the four people in my mouth this morning so I could (laughs) talk, (laughs) you know, get them stitches right and (laughs) get it all because there's still stitches in there. So, um, but a lot of our friends and family won, won awards. Um, a lot of our sponsors um, won awards, and there'll be a full release later today about who won the awards for what. But folks like you know, Nick, Nick, and from from Muchachos, um, they won automotive was not nominated. Honda of Lincoln, of course. Um, it it was a pretty cool day, a pretty cool night, and pretty good. Uh, uh, Nebraska Knickerball, he won a couple of awards. As a matter of fact, uh, matter of fact, we'll put you back in it, Farley. Uh, get you back into the into the bubble one more time <laughs> revenge <laughs> get him back into it um but it was lincoln's finest in, in, in the building and it was really cool um but yeah i was <laughs> I went to i went i had my appointment this morning and i had the hat and i put it by the door and i normally will grab a cap on the way out 
uh, but it was sitting there in front of me and I'm just like, ah, screw it. <laughs> I'm going to wear it with my tennis shoes. Um, we'll let folks deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, kind of the Dion look, right? It, well, it, it, it <laughs> way before wears, Dion. I don't know if he wears boots. <laughs> way before Dion. Do you, do you, do you got the spikes in the back of them? No, I didn't do the spurs. Didn't I, didn't just, spurs. I did the bolo tie. The bolo tie was was a move. Mm. So you look like J.R. Ewing. I, I, I looked like Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I looked, yeah, yeah. Kiss an angel, good morning. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. that's how I walked in. I had my, my, my red letters on. I had my red snake skins on. Um, even black jeans, man in black. Mm. I had a black blazer, bolo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I told him, I said, yeah, everybody in the room, you didn't have it on today's bingo card that there was going to be a black cowboy up here <laughs> <laughs> in boots and bolo up here giving out these awards. But um, it, I, it was at the Rococo, and it was a full, filled Rococo. And I just have to say, it's it, it was really, like, it was a good group not all of those events pull off the way uh last night's did where it was just a good time everybody was in good spirits everybody was well dressed tons of pictures tons of video and then there were three guys the highlight for me one i mean you know they had they had a uh, mechanical bull and oh, I, nice. oh oh and everybody there was a line for people getting this, this mechanical bull well i named nicknamed it matt rule yeah, I said, I said, because that that bull, that 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 bull, if, if they do it right, that bull didn't take a loss last night. Mm. <laughs> that bull, that bull didn't take a loss. Let me tell you, it bull was, was bucking. Oh, man. that bull was putting it work. I was like, okay, so that's that's the standard we're setting. And then the other side, if you if have either of you seen uh, the th the movie The Three Amigos with Steve Martin? Yeah. Okay. So three gentlemen walked in in full. Amigos mm. gear. <laughs> they had the costumes. Nice. They had the hat. They had the hats, and then they got up on stage. And you know the little salute that they do where they cross their arms and pump their hips. They did it. I brought them up on stage, <laughs> and they did it up on stage. And I am such a a, a child. I'm such a <laughs> a child in my heart that that was like the highlight of my night was having the three <laughs> amigos show up. So it was it was a really cool thing. So I wanted to say that. Um. I just also want to tease something. Um, and I can't even tell you all who it is. But tomorrow at 10, um, you will have a special guest. Mm. I can't even announce who it is. I'm going to hold that under my hat. That's why I wore the cowboy hat today. It's so big, I had to wear it under, my, under a cowboy hat. Um, so just... Dusty Rose? B. <laughs> Mac <laughs> Dream. Star Child. <laughs> Character is planning on having, having Goldberg on tomorrow. In, so it'll be, it'll be a good, uh, it'll be a good day. Yeah, in public, if, yeah. if you will. Yeah. If you will. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can be starting on Dusty. Yeah, it's, right. a full hour. <laughs> like it's a full hour. It's a full hour. Um, um, I, I did, this, was, this was the other thing, and I want to get with you. We'll do it sometime next week. But I do want to have a wrestling hour with with you two i'll ask you this question i was asked last night and i and and i had to think about it who is the greatest wrestler we don't talk about in your mind mm. who is the greatest wrestler that when we talk about great wrestlers and we rattle off the list of of greats in the past that we don't talk about and Farley will understand where, because because my first one was from Georgia. <laughs> my first one was from Georgia. And then the second one was a guy who battled every great wrestler. There's some match of him wrestling every great wrestler. Mm. Bach, the greatest wrestler that maybe that never won a, a heavyweight championship, mm. Mm. right? That never yeah. won the heavyweight championship. And I think it's fair that you have to put the disclaimer on it. Yeah. Like that they just never, they were so good, but they never won the heavyweight championship. Bach, who you got? Well, he, he certainly doesn't get under talked about. Macho Man, I, I think he was kind of a mid-card. He, he yeah, he was a world champion. Yeah, he actually he won. Yeah. He actually won the strap. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there's certain guys that we, we kind of think of that, that they never put the, the strap on. Right. Um, one of my favorites, and I don't know if he'd be quite in the, in that, but I always liked the shooting star from Billy Kidman. Oh, I, I love Billy Kidman. Oh, he was so good. And he'd help, uh, he'll help, he'd help put on uh, matches long after his career. But, uh, yeah, back, back in the day with Ray Mysterio Jr. And the Conan and the filthy animals and, and the, the one, WCW. two, three kid, like yeah. him and Sean Waltman. Yeah. 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 Barley. That's a hard one. <laughs> right, right, man. From and I went straight. From, my from mind my went straight to Georgia. Yeah, I probably had to say, he was champion one time, but he he don't get the the credit for it that much. No, yeah. Lex Luger. Yeah, mm. Lex did his thing. You know, he don't get that recognition like he used to. I, you know, you he, <laughs> yeah, his afterlife, his after wrestling life did a lot. Yeah, to to hurt his. And my other one, I I yeah. would say um. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yo, but come on. <laughs> I loved him. Yeah. Hacksaw. He was good. But he never won it. Well, he was an Atlanta Falcons, so that makes sense that you would that you <laughs> that makes sense that he would be your guy. There there are a lot of Atlanta Falcons. So let me give you three. You can tell me how it how they land. One, the first one is the magnificent Morocco, Don Morocco, mm. who never won the title, but was always he before what they did with Gunter. They did with Don Morocco, mm. and he held the international title for a long, intercontinental title for a long time. Second, I have to go to Georgia. I have to go to Georgia. Wahoo McDaniel. Ooh, mm. Wahoo. Wahoo yeah. McDaniel. They never, like, you never, you never hear people talk about Wahoo. Yeah. But Wahoo got in with everybody and gave them that work. Oh, yeah. Wahoo gave them the work. And then the third one was a guy that he never won the title, but Tony Atlas. Mm. Yeah. Tony Atlas locked me in to being a wrestling fan right yeah and here's the surprise i thought farley's was gonna be from georgia i thought he was gonna be i was gonna go tony atlas but we we knew i, I thought he was then, gonna go to, Tom, they, i thought they, he was gonna say we, tommy rich that, mm. yeah i thought he was gonna say tommy <laughs> wildfire rich yeah i mean yeah because he did battle rick flair like, yeah like he was and, and, right? and was bloody most of the time right so you know but you know that, that would be my third one and then here's here's the real king of that category the greatest baby face to ever exist. Mm. Ready for this? Yeah. Ricky Steamboat. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ricky Steamboat is the greatest face. Ricky the front. Dragon Steamboat. Never turned, never did his thing. Yeah, and, and they never gave him yeah. the big, the biggest title. He never got, yeah. the, he never got the big strap. Yeah. So, there we go. Yeah. Jimmy the Superfly Stop. Snooker. That is another one, right? That's another one. <laughs> That's a good deal. I ain't going to start that today. There you go, bro. <laughs> we are, we, we are, me and Bach is having fun. So I know, we, man. I'm, 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 I'm going to let you. I got to go in the okay. back and get some tea. All right. Before, let's get out of here before we have a whole nother hour of WWF and NWO yeah. and everything. 93.7, the ticket. We are powered by Bauer. 93.7. We'll be right back. Ninety-three-seven. The ticket. Fox KFXL weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today. We'll see a chance of showers this morning, then partly sunny skies this afternoon. It will be breezy too, with the high around fifty-eight. Tonight we'll see increasing clouds and a low around thirty-five. And tomorrow mainly cloudy skies expected, with an afternoon high around fifty-nine. I'm meteorologist Kyle Butcher for ninety-three point seven. The ticket and the ticket FM.com. Where will your path take you, traveler? To seek fortune in a new career? Or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. This is Coach Bill Bush. You all know my passion for Nebraska. Having coached all over the country, I can honestly say there is no place like Nebraska. You know where there's also no place like? Midwest Bank. Midwest Bank has proudly served Nebraska for over 70 years, and they're located in nine different communities. Midwest Bank is ready, willing, and able to meet all your personal, business, and agriculture needs. Your community, your bank, and mine, Midwest Bank. Find out more at Midwest Bank. Member F. D I C early break with sip and Jake. Nobody goes to McDonald's more than you. Nobody. <laughs> no, every meal, I, I every, every, I mean, every meal, every morning, every morning goes to McDonald's every, every day. day. 
I do. Yeah. Oh, I go every day. Is it? Yeah. How many that's, times? I mean, that's a lot. How many? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'm saying in the next year I go nine times. <laughs> that's I go high nine. for me. I'm not going nine oh, times. Oh, I mean seven McDonald's. times yeah. a week. Seven yeah. times a week. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of times so though. You go more than once a day. Oh, for sure. But yeah. So I'm telling you. So it's but 500. I just get coffee. But you go 500 times a year. That's a lot. Five <laughs> times a year. The most I'm at is nine. I'm at nine. Shakes at four, and you're at five hundred. I say four to five hundred myself. <laughs> so, I said nine. Put it hundred. that way. It is. Just do the math. Early break with Sip and Jake from six to eight every weekday morning on ninety three seven. The ticket. If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up. Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to inquire at 402 402- 560-6197. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Finally, a good reason to have a smart house. Just say, Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket and we'll magically start playing How's it work? Nobody knows. Don't ask questions. 93.7 The Ticket. Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today. We'll see a chance of showers this morning and partly sunny skies this afternoon. It will be breezy too with the high around 58. Tonight we'll see increasing clouds in the low around 35. And tomorrow mainly cloudy skies expected with an afternoon high around 59. I'm meteorologist Kyle Bucket for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Sean Callahan here of HuskerOnline.com inviting you to join us here on 93.7 The Ticket every Saturday morning now in our new time. We're on from 8 to 9 with the weekly Husker Online radio show. We'll give you the latest in recruiting. We'll talk about what's going on with both football, basketball, and we'll probably share a few stories from the inside. It's every Saturday morning right here on 93.7 The Ticket. It's the Husker Online radio show from 8 to 9 a.m. At Parkview Animal Hospital in Lincoln, it's not just their professional care that sets them apart, but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities. Whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure, at Parkview, your pet isn't just another number, but a valued member of their caring family. Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. Back with Vershawn Jackson, powered by Bauer, on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back to the Captain Show, 93.7 The Ticket. It is I, the black shirt, and I am with Bach. And yes, the Captain Show, we are back. The Captain's not in today, so it's Bach in the black shirt. Show. Bach, what you got, Bach? Well, we should do maybe every time, every day at this time, we should do a transfer portal update because the world of college sports is crazy. And to, to try to follow all these people transferring around, uh, I've just got a few updates for you. We've learned of uh, a few different landing spots for ex-Huskers uh, that entered the portal from the basketball team. Um, you might have seen it. Eli Rice, per his Instagram, is staying in the Big Ten and committing to Penn State. Of course, he was uh, he was a, a young player that a lot of people saw some upside with. Um, so he stays in the Big Ten. Um, but he goes down. But uh, Nebraska can't really complain about a, a guy transferring in conference because we just grabbed Greg, Gavin Griffiths uh, from Rutgers. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I guess they, it, 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 at one time, you know, that's a, well, that's a different conference. So I don't know. I don't well, know if you get mad about that anymore. Well, I can say this about the guy transferring to Penn State. He's going down. Yeah. But, you know, the guy from Rutgers, he's coming up. That's right. You know, so. Well, Rutgers it, actually has two of the top five, uh, basically two of the top three commits coming in, like nationally. They've got some guys coming in. So I'm really interested to see what Rutgers does. But, um, yeah, I think Penn State, did, you know, that might be a step down, he could say. But, I mean, 
Nebraska basketball. We can't really look down on a whole lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we picking them up also, though. Yeah, yeah, we are. So uh, so that's uh, one. Uh, Matar Jope is commanding uh, or, or going to Loyola Marymount out there in California. So obviously that is a step down in, in, in play. But he was uh, considered quite a project. So we'll see what happens there. Um, a couple other uh, news as, as far as transfers go. Let's go to women's basketball now. Lucy Olson, the number three scorer in Division One women's basketball this past season, behind Caitlin Clark and uh, USC's Juju Watkins, is transferring to Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, so Iowa, we, we yeah we had to we had some people believe that Iowa was going to fall off a cliff. Well, Lucy Olson's there to save the day, so we'll see if she can keep Iowa at least relevant. I mean, to go back to a championship game would be would be pretty difficult, but we'll see if they do that. Of course, Caitlin Clark went to back-to-back championship games with Iowa. Also, LSU's Haley Van Liff has transferred to TCU. Um, so just kind of some interesting moves there. Um, other other uh, quick transfer portal news that I've seen in the last couple of days, now jumping to uh, football, Colorado tailback Alton McCaskill is entering the transfer portal. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. 14th Colorado Buffalo to hit the transfer portal this week. So uh, the ever the never ending roster movement in <laughs> under Deion Sanders and Boulder um, continues. And then one that I thought was interesting. This is a little bit old, but I've had it on my sheet here for a few days. Former Maryland standout tight end Corey Dykes is transferring to Charlotte. Uh, the move to Charlotte will reunite Dykes with his former Maryland tight ends coach, uh, Mike Miller, who is now the 49ers Charlotte's offensive coordinator. Um, they'll see if the six foot two, 250 pound Dykes, uh, will be moved to wide receiver, wide receiver. I mean, he's obviously still got that sort of build almost 500 yards each of the past two seasons with the, with Maryland, uh, and has been one of the better tight ends in, in the big 10. So I thought that was a very interesting move to follow a, a position coach to, to Charlotte, who is, who's now the offensive coordinator there. Hmm. That's great. Yeah. Hey, maybe he, he sees something he don't, they don't see. That so at some point we got to stop these Charlottes from picking on the Maryland <laughs> schools. You know, it's just it's not fair to Maryland. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just a lot of uh, like I said, we could almost do this segment every day uh, to look through uh, the transfer portal. It's just it is it is wild, and of course, a lot of teams are done with their spring practices, had their spring games. So uh, especially the college football transfer portal, it is on and popping. There 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 are people declaring basically every minute and uh in in the, again um you know for for a lot of these guys maybe it's the, they don't like their spot on the team post spring i think you might see a, a few departures from nebraska um after spring um and that's just naturally going to happen these days um you know others may be looking for nil opportunities um and yeah. but you know, we got to remember a lot of these guys just aren't going to find that the grass is greener on the other side they're gonna you know you might be upset with your with your spot you might you might be heading to Charlotte for a different reason, <laughs> reason right? Than, than well, calling think, a position coach. I think with the new rule now, it's unlimited transfers now, isn't it? Uh, Something as, like as that. As of right now, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, they can go anywhere. Hey, if they don't like it, they can leave. It's just like the Proctor kid going back to Alabama after spending, what, three, <laughs> yeah. four, five months in Iowa? He is. A, he has a goal to be the most hated guy in Iowa, mm. uh, which is crazy. I, I mean, he had he had a cup of coffee to come back over to Iowa, and maybe that cup of coffee was, uh, better, you know, had a lot of bag money in it with it. But, he better move his family to Alabama or yeah, something. Yeah, he better. Yeah. Um, to tease Iowa, you know, again, yeah. if, you aren't, if you aren't familiar with this st- story, Caden Proctor, like the number one offensive tackle prospect uh, across the country in Iowa, was going to commit to the, the home state school. Uh, it was like their biggest signee in, in a long time. They, they've had a few five stars over the last couple of years. So Iowa uh, usually can grab one guy every couple classes, but he was a, a big deal and then decided, you know what? I, I, I would rather go to Alabama. And he started last year at Alabama and then said after one year, Nick Saban's gone. I said, you know what? I'm going back to Iowa. That's where my heart belongs. Uh, and that lasted all of, uh, it was, Felt like days. I don't even know if it was weeks <laughs> before he entered the transfer portal again. And now he's back at Alabama. Hmm. Sad. <laughs> Got to make your mind up, kid. Yeah. I, I don't know if he'll be welcome back into Iowa. Yeah. yeah. I don't I think he's. I think he better he's... fly into Chicago and drive in. <laughs> he better not fly into Iowa, Iowa City, wherever, wherever they big as the airport is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, wild times. Uh, a lot of different wild stories in the transfer portal. But. It's good to see a couple of former Huskers get some landing spots at least, and, and at least they won't be lost in the portal. 
See, I told you. The fastest hour in radio has ended, and now it's time for hour number two. That's right. All righty, the Captain Show. We'll be right back. 93.7 The Ticket. home for sports talk on the fm dial also online at the ticketfm.com on the internet kntk fm for 93.7 the ticket hi this is state senator carolyn bosin as a state senator wife and mom i believe lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family my husband reggie and i are local family business owners and actively involved in our community last year i voted for the largest property tax relief package in nebraska history Property tax relief is important to every family, and I will continue to deliver more property tax relief to working families. This is Carolyn Bosin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Bosin for Legislature. Hi, Sean Callahan here for Cobble Chevrolet GMC, and our annual spring sales event is now underway. We have absolutely huge savings right now at Cobble. New Sierras and new Silverados have a double whammy. Choose from APR starting at 1.9%, are discounts over 9,000. Yes, that's right, 1.9% APR or discounts of over 9,000. So please take that short money-saving drive down 144th Street just south of the interstate or check us out online at couplecars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with approved credit. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. Early break with Sip and Shake. Nobody goes to McDonald's more than you. Nobody. <laughs> no, every meal, I, I every, every day. Call, I, I mean, don't go every, every meal. Every, every meal, morning you're there. Every not, morning goes to McDonald's every, single every day. day. I do yeah. it. Oh, I go every day. Is it? Yeah. How many that's, times? I mean, that's a lot. How many? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'm saying in the next year I go nine times. <laughs> that's I go high nine. for me. I'm not going nine oh, times. Oh, I mean seven McDonald's. times yeah. a week. Seven yeah. times a week. That's what I mean. Yeah. So there's a lot of times day. though. But you go more than once a day. Oh, for sure. But yeah. So I'm telling you. So it's but 500. I just get coffee. But you go 500 times a year. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, times a year. The most I'm at is nine. I'm at nine. <laughs> Shakes at four. And you're at 500. I say four to five myself. <laughs> so, I said nine. Put it that way. It is. Just do the math. Early break with Sip and Jake from six to eight every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Are you ready to take your seating season to the next level? Now is your chance with Landmark Implement's early order program. Don't miss out on the best deals of the season on new John Deere air seeders and drills, including the N500C Central Commodity System. Experience the ease of operation with the new N500C's intuitive design, simplifying your seating process and saving you valuable time in the field. Lock in the largest cash discounts, snag the best financing rate, and ensure availability on a new drill. Contact your local Landmark location for full details and experience the Landmark difference. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves. And we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 20 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. This is 93.7 The Ticket. Look at me short. Look at me short. I'm the captain now. 
Three-time national champion, Vershawn Jackson. Touchdown. Vershawn Jackson, number 34, gets the touchdown. Terrell Farley. Terrell Farley. Terrell Farley. Defending Terrell Farley. Who last week in his first start was a holy terror. Number 43. And Jake Bakovic. I talked to few cats. They said that Bob got some game, man. Coming at you live from the Copple Chevrolet GMC Studios in the heart of Lincoln, America. On air and online at theticketfm.com. Powered by Bauer. Here he is, Vershawn Jackson. Welcome back to the Captain Show, hour number two of the fastest two, uh, two hours in radio. Bach, we back. We're back. We're back. All right, Bach, let's start this hour number two now. I, I, I texted you something early this morning. I stole it off somebody's um, Twitter page. And let's get settled in real fast. Let's let Bach let, get the music right. So, Bach, I text you this list earlier. Oh, Bach, I didn't tell you yesterday. You didn't hear the show yesterday? Uh-uh. Well, uh, I'm going to give you a recap real fast. Of right. what what um It's called a Black and Gold Weekend, Primetime Elite Dinner. To sit at a VIP table with Coach Primetime with, with up to eight people, $20,000. Oof. Yeah. Uh, primetime table to be in the vicinity of his, of his um, VIP room with 10 people. Seventeen thousand dollars. I know the elite table, fifteen thousand dollars. Black and gold table, twenty five thousand, twenty five hundred. No, twelve thousand. Oh yeah, that, that, the buff deal table. Out of it all, I guess. The buff table, seven thousand dollars, and the golden ticket just to get in by yourself is a thousand dollars. Or you could sponsor a plate for two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was something crazy yesterday. I don't know if I would ever pay. I, I, I mean. I like celebrities as much as the next guy, and maybe I'm, uh, you know, thankful to, to have met many of my heroes. I suppose as Nebraska former Nebraska Cornhuskers. I don't think I'd pay that much to eat dinner with anybody. I, I'm sorry. I, obviously, I would. I don't have the money to do that, but uh, no. that's that's crazy. No, 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 no. never. <laughs> but yeah, Bob, I texted you something else this morning. Yeah, Sam, we got this list. Now I got it off Will Compton page, so. That's probably why he's on here, but <laughs> but <laughs> uh, sense, yeah. it says who is the best undrafted player since the year two thousand. They got eight players, and you can go you you can have this conversation probably all day with people. Yeah, but I'm gonna read out the eight people who's on this list. So you have Tony Romo. We all know who he is. We oh, all yeah. know Wes Walker, mm. Antonio Gates. Jason Peters, the tackle from Philly, not Jason Peters from Nebraska. Yeah. Um, Cameron Wake, James Harrison, Chris Harrison Jr., and Will Compton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like who is the best undrafted player since 2000? Now, that list again is Romo, Wes Welker, Antonio Gates, Jason Peters, um, Will Compton, Chris Harris Jr., James Harrison and Cameron Wake. You want to go first, Bach, or you want me to go first? Uh, oh, my pick would probably be, um, I'd probably have to go James Harrison. I mean, that guy was a dominant, and in, in, in maybe it's just because he broke my heart as an Arizona can you Cardinals go, can, fan. Can but... we go 1A and 1B? Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if you got a 1B. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, but yeah, I, I think to me, I would I would go with James Harrison. He, he had that play at the end of that Super Bowl. If you remember, where he returned, it was like an interception return for like ninety two yards or whatever it was for a touchdown. Just completely changed the the flip of the the script of that game. And then of course the Steelers ended up having to uh, have a, a game winning drive at the end to to clinch that Super Bowl. But that was a huge play, um, and it was more than that. I mean, he's an N NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Um, so I mean, that's a that's, I'm not going out on too much of a limb, but I mean, there's some good names in there. Yeah. Hey, if you had a one B, who would it be, Bob? Uh, probably Antonio Gates. You, you got it. And, yeah. and you, you're, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, this is a good list. Jason Peters had a good career. Um, Wes Walker had a good career. A couple of Super Bowls. Tony Romo, which is 
you know, if you're a Cowboys fan, you probably like him. Cameron Wake, James, Chris Harris Jr., and also Will Compton. So <laughs> Yeah. If you go but, through uh, the list, obviously, and there's yeah. there's uh there's a lot of um hype and excitement for this year's NFL draft, but it is, it's one of the better stories is guys that get undrafted um, uh, that go on to have uh, magical careers, you know, like Wes Welker certainly is hard to argue against. I, I think Chris Harris being on that list, you sometimes forget he, he teamed with the keep to leave there at Kansas. Uh, yeah. I, I forgot that he was the that he wasn't drafted. Um, just trying to look through some of the other names. You know, I know we did uh, since 2000, Adam Vinatieri, yeah. uh, a kicker for the Patriots and, and Colts for all that time. Uh, one of the best kickers you of all put, time. You could put Purdy on that now. Oh, yeah. he, he's no, he Mr. got drafted. Relevant. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Relevant. Uh, Priest Holmes, another yeah. name. He he flashed for a while there uh, with the Chiefs. Isaiah Crowell. Yeah. Played for Cleveland. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Was, so, if I had to go with anybody on this list, I probably would, you know, you're right. I, I probably have to go with James Harrison and Antonio Gates. I was going to say Antonio Gates, then James Harrison. But the way James Harrison changed the just how big he was and, and how he played. That's the guy you want to play with. Yeah. That's the guy who goes all out. That's the guy I want right there in the middle. And 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 and, and, and I think Jay Foreman started to play like that when he learned how to play middle because Jay was a uh, strong side linebacker at first. Yeah, and I heard VJ said, oh, what if Terrell played strong side linebacker? Yeah. Well, Jamel played strong side linebacker. He was five pounds heavier than me. <laughs> So, you know, it, it's not about, you know. It would have been a different uh, different uh, assignments and stuff, yeah, but I, yeah. I think a great player so, would, yeah. would shine through one way or the other. Yeah, Rashawn's crazy. But, um, yeah, I would have to go with them two. But James Harrison was the real deal, man. Yeah. That's, that, if I could have played with him, man, that probably would have made my, my, my dream come true. <laughs> 2008 NFL Defensive Player of the Year, five-time Pro Bowler. Yeah, James Harrison was an absolute beast. I was just looking at some of the other names that, you know, Kurt Warner, obviously. Uh, yeah. The, the, the story's so good, they made a movie off of yeah. it. So uh, <laughs> there's not much more to say there. I forgot about this. John Randall. Uh, oh, yeah. Defensive tackle for the yeah. Vikings for all those years. Seven Pro Bowls. And he, he was undrafted, uh, notably coming out of Texas A&M Kingsville. Um, so maybe that's part of the reason why. But, uh, I you know, it was just kind of fun to go through some of those lists and think, man, uh you know, you, the household names now, but at one time, you know, you'd go through an entire draft <laughs> picking this guy or that guy, and you you pass John Randall. Yeah, that's yeah, good. It's crazy. So yeah, that's a good list though, man. It's yeah. it's hard to to say who's number. One. I mean, we already know. I, I say Marvin, um, James Harrison, and uh, Antonio Gates, but you know, if if it was a person like Rico, it probably would be um, Wes Walker. You know, he would probably say Wes Walker. Yeah, and, and Tony yeah. Romo. On Rico. <laughs> just, How about for the Huskers? Uh, I don't know if I can think. I mean, Will Compton is a, is a is a pretty good uh, example of a guy that you know was able to make a career out of of not getting drafted. I'm trying to think of of some of the others. You know, there there's um you know there, there there's guys that obviously find a spot in the league, but like it like a Compton like a like a JoJo Doman. I, I yeah. mean, I think there's plenty of examples over the years of guys that you know, make some special teams contributions and, uh, and we'll see if he can, you know, elevate his career past that. Um, but there's, it's, 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 it's a tough gig to, to, oh, <laughs> to yeah. go from that to like everyday NFL starter, like a Will Compton did. Yeah. That's, it's a hard thing to do, you know, I mean, especially good how Will Compton did it because, you know, he, he made it, you know, and he made it every year. He was a starter. Like, like I say, some guys do the special team routes, their whole career, but, we had to see Stanley um, Stanley Morgan. Yeah, yeah. You know he's at the Saints now, so he was a guy who was. I think he spent four years at um, Cincinnati, didn't he? Yeah, it seems like it seems long, longer than that, but it might have been. It yeah. might have been. Yeah. So you know, guys can make it anywhere. You just got to keep your head straight and 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 believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, it's fun with the draft coming up too. Uh, are you are you getting more excited? Or, I mean, your Falcons kind of already made their play at quarterback, so. Yeah, I think uh, somebody had us getting. I seen a mock draft. They, they say we was getting a defensive end from somewhere. Mm. I can't think. It's not Will Anderson. He's he's not in the draft, is he? No, no, no. He was no. It's last another. Year. It's another defensive end that that's good. He was last year, so I don't. I don't. I don't. I forgot. I think he was from Alabama somewhere. I uh, usually can't go wrong picking picking a defensive. But I forgot the name of it. Though. I forgot his name. So it was a mock draft came out the other day. So 
And I forgot who they was talking about for the Falcons, though. And the Falcons, where, where are they picking? Are they picking I think pretty high? In the top 10, I, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to go back and try to remember. I z- uh, zero in on my uh, Cardinals picking fourth, though, and well, hoping yeah, they, they get Marvin they Harrison Jr. Yeah, they said Marvin Harrison. Yeah. They said Bauer fell down to 10 with the Jets. Mm. So Yeah, the, the Falcons, by the way, picking eight. So uh, that yeah. would be exciting. Yes. All right. We got a top 10 pick. <laughs> yeah, we got to do the right thing. <laughs> See, Atlanta done the dumb things for the last couple of years. Well, they got Baja, uh, so yeah, yeah. That was a pretty good so deal. that's a that's a good one, you know. And still, we got Pitts the year before that, I think. So, and we, you know, we we can get a quarterback and groom him behind Kirk Cousins. You know, it's it, sure. it's not a well, Kirk Cousins is kind of old, but you you know, he's 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 a guy that can still get you probably two or three years. Yeah, I'm interested to see, you know, he said he, that he pretty much wants to retire there, you know, kind of being the last one uh, there. Um, and also, it, 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 I guess the latest news on that is that the Patriots are open to trading the number three pick. The Cardinals have said as much about the number four pick. For all the teams that are going to be quarterback hungry uh, and want to jump up, you might be able to get some future draft, draft capital out of that. But the Patriots, um, same thing. But they're, they're, they're kind of in need of a quarterback, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so for them to... So they're, it, that's kind of the report is that, yeah, they're, they're shopping it, but they're also interested in quarterbacks. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. Why give away something you need? It's right there for you. And your number three. I mean, pick, there, there's no quarterback of free agents right now that that's probably can fit their style or however they're going to play it. Cause you know, they got a new coach now. So we don't know what style of football they're going to play or what, how they're going to run their team. So everything's new. When you want to get a new quarterback to start off this new team, new coach, you know what I'm saying? But just it's new, everything. So, you know, when you want to get a new quarterback to, to, to fit that role and I, yeah. And I thought they was going to probably take, um, Drake may. Yeah. If he falls to him, um, they've, they've apparently spent a considerable amount of time. Um, obviously scouting Caleb Williams likely won't be there. Um, Jaden Daniels of LSU, of course the Heisman winner and Drake may also JJ McCarthy from Michigan. Um, and he's really the interesting one. Is is somebody gonna gonna? He's he's kind of been rising over the last couple of months. What pick is somebody San, gonna so rise Diego up and have. pick him? I'm what, sorry. What pick does San Diego have? Uh well, there there's no San Diego anymore. I mean, the Chargers. The Chargers. Uh, the LA, Chargers. Yeah, the LA yeah. Chargers. Oh, let me look here. Still San Diego to me. Yeah, I so, know. As yeah. long as they had the Thunderbolts, they San Diego. <laughs> long live Qualcomm Stadium in my mind. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. So the Bears obviously get the first pick. Commanders, Patriots um cardinals let's see if i can find where the chargers are fifth so they'll be right in there hey wouldn't it be kind of crazy if jim harborough dra- uh draft jj would be really crazy because they have a pretty I know. quarterback right now I know. <laughs> but you got a yeah. hundred million dollar quarterback there <laughs> yeah i don't know though, though i'm i'm fascinated from the college football angle uh i just appreciate jim harbaugh uh, more and more for winning a championship at Michigan the way that he did it. And you could say the way that he did it, you might be mocking me. He's so talking about cheating and all that. Um, so maybe there's a little bit of that. But to win at a Northern school with a power run game, um, and, and you know, it, it hasn't necessarily done J.J. McCarthy favors. And, and of course, Jim Harbaugh is going to say everything he can. I mean, he, he compared him while he was at Michigan uh, to, you know, some of the all-time greats at quarterback. But uh, just to me, as a college football fan, I'm I'm... I'm interested to see where Harbaugh's uh, path goes. I don't think it's going to come back to college football anytime soon. Um, but uh, I just have the utmost respect uh, for what he was able to do there. Again, you can com- you can be laughing uh, all the way you want to um, because of the fact of, of the cheating and the scandals that went on there. But to win at Michigan, that's no short <laughs> to win a championship. To win, you know, to be consistent in the top ten. Yeah, that's kind of what they expect out in Ar- Ann Arbor. But to win a championship at Michigan in the Big Ten, where it hadn't been done since 2013. Obviously, at Michigan, where it hadn't been done since 1997. Um, I don't know if sometimes when you're kind of in the moment or in the year, you don't appreciate that. But I, I think when we look back uh, and, and, you know, kind of think in the past 25 years or something and say, well, you know, what were some of the biggest accomplishments, you know, and, and, and I, I, that's, that one's always going to stand out to me. Yeah, but it's, it's a lot of people can say this, but uh, I'm going to break it down to you, Buck. But, um, yeah, a lot of people say, oh, you got caught cheating. Yeah. But you didn't win. So when you didn't cheat, you blew everybody out. And then people put you under that microscope that you was cheating, but you didn't because you knew you was being watched the whole year. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So now you go back and 
and, and you come back this year, and Michigan did something like they did in the early 90s, uh, late 80s. They ran a power, power football with good defense. I mean, that whole team was good. So you can't take nothing away from that that Michigan team because the way they operated. It was a run-first team, uh, had great defense, great play. They had 18, probably 18 draft picks probably going to be drafted this year. So you got to watch out for that. I mean, he he built that team. I mean, that's a traditional thing like Rule is trying to do because Michigan barely, rarely goes to the portal. I mean, they got Ernest Hausman, who's probably going to be a starter next year. Yeah. Could be a starter here. And with, with a couple of these other young guys, that would be a great – we would probably have the greatest linebackers in, in the nation, and not probably in the Big Ten. But if we could have kept Ernest Hausman, mix him in with some of these guys we got right now, man, that would be a good defense. But, you know, Michigan does it the right way. I mean, they – they keep their players happy. They get the top players, and they develop them. Like, you know, we're not talking about three stars developing. I mean, they yeah. got five stars, four stars that that won't start immediately, but eventually they will start probably a year or two, and they stay there. You don't see guys just jump in and out the portal for Michigan. I mean, if they did, it's because Harborough left, but they, they sticking with their coach, you know, so that's what they're doing. Yeah, and, and 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 again, to me, that style, the way that they did it, it took some patience. Obviously, you know, they, they felt like they hit a wall with with Harbaugh at one point, but uh, to me, that's again part of the blueprint of, of how you're going to win at Nebraska. I don't think if you try to to try to out Ohio State, Ohio State's going to be difficult with the recruiting grounds that they have, and Michigan might have a little bit of a, 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 of, a of of a benefit there, but not much of one. It's not like Michigan's a hotbed for <laughs> recruits. Um, but you know, there's, there's some bigger cities there and, and just geographically you can reach in Ohio and Penn state and Pennsylvania a little bit easier. Players go to players, go to programs that win. Right. I mean, that's why some yeah, of Nebraska, these guys go. Nebraska I mean, if, if, if recruiting classes, yeah, I past. mean, they had, but if I, if I, if I was a top kid and Hey, 10 and one every year, 11 and oh, go to the, 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 the college football championship series, you know, get to where Jordan's. Hey, I, I want to play for the best team. That's what I want to do. That's how my recruiting came down. Yeah. That's how I chose Nebraska because I told myself, if I want to go anywhere, I want to go to Nebraska because I want to see what it feels like to play with the big boys. That's mm. why I went to Nebraska. I could have went anywhere. I could have, I had 80, 88 scholarships to go anywhere. Nebraska had just won it. Somebody, some kids would be afraid. No, I wanted that challenge. You know, I wanted to see what it feel like to go to a major college. After me being two years in the projects in in, in junior college, yeah. our dorms look like projects, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know, you think it's bad up here when they give you these stories. Try going to a junior college. Mm. You know, I mean, players don't realize how bad going to a junior college was. You know, especially when you 10,000, 1,000 miles away from home and you know, is and you in in a town with five hundred people. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the hard part. But I, that's how I did my recruiting. I said, hey, they said, where you gonna go? I said, I'm gonna go to Nebraska. I want to see what it feels like to play. See, can I go there and take something that I want? Yeah, yeah. Nebraska could could get back to the days of, of getting Terrell Farley's and if Nebraska could just go games. ten and two a couple of years, nine and yeah. three. You're gonna get the, you're gonna attract those kids. Then, then with the, the the facilities you got, leave the stadium alone. Mm. You got the facilities, leave the stadium alone. Yeah. Just don't do that. You know, don't tear down no South Stadium or or build nothing. Just leave it like it is. It's been doing good for the last hundred and some years. It's been there. Yeah. Why you want to tear something down and and build it all over? Now you're messing with the stands. You know, just let it go. And just, you know, Nebraska has a chance to go. You know, I think we could probably win eight games this year. We can go mm-hmm. eight and four, eight and five, go to bowl game. Next year he come back, look, you know, 10 and three. You know, build it like, I mean, you got to build it to be the best. But first you got to take these baby steps. Get on Penn State level. We want to get on Penn State level. We yeah. want to take the top three dogs out of the Big Ten. Our first talents, our first task is to get on Penn State level. Yeah. Get them recruits that they get. Play football like they play, you know. Be ranked that, and and that's it. Play football. The kids will come here. Just win. The only thing we got to do is keep winning. Just win, and these kids will come here. Well, and you need to, you need to be able to develop these guys too, because it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg, the winners or the athletes. You know, you you Nebraska at one time maybe could cling to 
hey, we're Nebraska, we've been good, and so they could get a, a good enough recruiting class. Regardless, Nebraska, we've seen over the last 25 years, according to recruiting sites, is going to finish anywhere between 15th and 25th, basically, in recruiting. Um, but the problem has been developing those guys. And, you know, you look at programs, so when you say we want to beat Penn State, at one time, Nebraska was at that level. Like, we don't want to lose the conference to Ohio, you know, Oklahoma and Texas, you know, and then you join the conference and we want to take down Ohio State, Michigan. And then over the years, it's it's starting to become like, man, we just got to beat Illinois and Purdue. I mean, because yeah. it started from Wisconsin and Iowa, you couldn't beat them. And, th and then it just kind of come down to the whole Big Ten West was beating you up. All that is is kind of hindsight, you know. That that's in the past now. That's not on Matt Rule, and they and, and they can raise this thing up. And obviously, the Big Ten's different than it was just two years ago, anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, they can they, they and they're doing a good job of trying to kind of find needles in the haystack and, and try to get you know players out of there. But um, this whole I, idea of of, of you know what, how are you going to attract the great players? You do have to win, and in order to win, you got to kind of do more with less. Where where Nebraska is right now. Um, all that being said, after they get the, the number one quarterback, you know, in the nation. So well, you know, obviously there was a tie there, but, uh, you know, well, they got to take it, advantage of this. Yeah. But here's the thing though. Some, most of these kids that come out of high school, they, 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 de they already developed, you know, some of them are ready to play because they do so much during the year, seven on seven, they'll do passing, they'll pass the league, they'll do the, you know, they, they, they play foot and then they be getting trainers. We didn't have trainers when, when I was in high school or, or, junior college they didn't you know these kids got trainers they got quarterback coaches they got 707 all oh, yeah. year round they got all this stuff you know working with you know working with the cheetah you know they if you see some high school kids working with with pro players you know if i'm just saying like some of these players are men mentally ready right now it's just if, if the coach got enough balls to put them in the f football game yeah, and you and know, we seen that for tough. Ernest Hausman. He was yeah. ready as a freshman. I think Nebraska used him so poorly that it made him transfer. He was not appreciated for the way he played as a freshman. Well, and that's one thing you can't say for a rule this offseason and, and cross our fingers, I suppose, because there's always some bad news at some point. But, you know, as opposed to last year where you lost some of your top young prospects and Ernest Hausman, um, obviously, uh, A.J. Allen heading off to Miami. They, they've held on to some of those younger guys that, that flash, you know, uh, and, and will be um, obviously key players to this team moving forward and into the program altogether. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about Carter Nelson. I want to talk to Bach about, you know, we got banks. We got all these, these receivers, you know. Um, we still got a you know, good little tight end room. Where did Carter fit in? Yeah. Should we rest over? Make them gain some weight, or should we just keep them happy and play them? 93.7 the ticket. We'll be right back. Grab a free burger and beer at LA Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the LA Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th at Wake Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. School tells you all about the four seasons. Spring, summer, and so on. And then there's a way we really tell what time of year it is. Sports seasons, football season, baseball season, or even off season. Well, what's the chocolate season? Well, it's now, of course. And now, and now, and always. Whether you're looking for a caffeinated pick-me-up on the way to work, a little snack on the way home, or you need the perfect gift that's sure to be appreciated. It's time for the chocolate season, y'all. 40th and Old Cheney, or order ahead at thechocolateseason.com. See you there. At Doan University, we build leaders. And that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours. And our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. 
We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 402- 590-5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors, and more. Do you need motivation to get to the gym on the weekend or even in general? Tune into the Movement Hour each Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Movement Academy owner Robert Kuhlman will host the show as he introduces new ways to stay in shape. The Movement Hour every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hey, Nebraska! Register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games, taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha, and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to CornhuskerStateGames.com. If you've experienced a sports injury, joint, or back pain, trust your care to Nebraska Orthopedic Center, a proud platinum partner of the Cornhusker State Games. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Whether you like fishing together or fishing to get away for the thrill of reeling in a big one or just going out to have a good time on the banks of your local pond, at a bend in a river, or on one of our many lakes and reservoirs, you'll always find the perfect place to cast a line here beneath Nebraska skies. Start planning your next fishing adventure today at letsfishnebraska.com. Sponsored by Nebraska Game and Parks, aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. 93.7 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 20 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. Back with Vershawn Jackson, powered by Bauer, on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Yeah. You got the bomb on me, baby. You got the bomb on me. You dropped the bomb on me, baby. You dropped the bomb on me, and you turned me. You dropped the bomb <laughs> on me, baby. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to the Ticket Ninety Three Point Seven. The Black Shirt Terrell falling on with Buck and Buck. We had a little discussion. We didn't have this discussion yet, but we're gonna discuss it now. With everything looking good, you see, we got a lot of young guys, and you know, Matt Rule. He, he he loves his young guys, you know. He lo- especially the young receivers. Um, we got Banks. We got uh, the other guy from Texas. Yep, we got we got the the the, the and it's a trio. Uh, two guys from West Side High School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Omaha. Then yep. you got Malachi and Jaden Daniels. Jaden Raw was Jaden Dawes. Jaden Dawes. So you know, it looks kind of like a crowded backfield over there. I know he he, he doesn't wear nothing to play tight end. So, Carter Nelson. Yeah, he does not this year. Um, great athlete though. You know, stayed in school for basketball. So he he's gonna be a summer kind of kid. And he's gonna get here probably after he graduate. But you know, how far will he be back? Will they try to 
you know, let them play a, a different kind of role. Um, something like that Bauer role, something that Harbert probably needs to be doing, but you know, still need him at quarterback. What 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 do you think they'll try to do? I I, I honestly think they should really try to redshirt this kid and, and put some weight weight on him. I think, especially if Fadoni stays healthy, you know, and he has a good backup too. So who's the other backup at tight end? Uh Nate Borkinger. Yeah. yeah, he he's he's yeah. he's a good kid, but you know, um, I think they should just redshirt Carter and just let him get himself ready for next year. See, that's interesting. And and I'd actually go with what you were saying earlier is I, I don't know if you plan for year five with Carter Nelson. I think you probably want to want to enjoy uh, the, the, the opportunity to use him while you can. I'm not saying anybody's a transfer risk or this or that. Um, but these days in college football, if you got a guy that can help your team, um, you let him go out there and help him. And obviously there's not a whole lot of talk or or, or, or or any of that around Carter Nelson because he's not with the team right now. He's still in high school uh, and will join the team in the summer. But if he if he goes out there and and, and proves to be one of your top, uh, you know, pass catchers or can kind of add an element to the team, maybe kind of a hybrid tight end wide receiver, um, you know, I think that that could help. So I don't expect Carter Nelson to redshirt. I, I mean, certainly could see it. I'm probably about... 60 I, to be honest i'm probably at 70 30 on that i, I think he's probably going to be good enough to help this team um right away and 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 you know hopefully that's the case we'll see there's still maybe an adjustment to be made i mean we saw him in the uh out in hawaii playing in the the all-star uh, game there and um you know it's not like he's he's unfamiliar with 11 man football but there's an adjustment not just from eight man to 11 but obviously up to the, to this skill level um but i mean i i think you do have a good tight end room um, but if he's one of your top pass catchers, there's there's no way you Richard him. So you're saying probably like a coming out the backfield in a fullback role to in motion. Yeah, I mean, and they've got a few different uh, possibilities. Like, like here. Bonner does, you yeah, know, sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. you know come out in the flats and try to, you know, zig, get the receiver zigzagging and probably they probably a delay route that they can run. Well, not just that. I mean, if you you know put him in the slot and have a you know maybe he's too quick for a linebacker uh, that's out there covering him or you know you, you can use his size although it's not huge, it's still bigger if if you have a smaller corner on him. So, they could try to to find some mismatch form at his size uh and, and see if if they can, you know, if that can be a weapon for him. Again, I kind of expect him to be, but but we'll see. Like I mean, if he gets to to camp and he doesn't necessarily stand out from the tight end group or uh, from some of your wide receivers, and they well, he don't wear good. enough to play tight end, Bach. He was at two what? He's uh, two twenty five. Yeah, that's not enough, Bach. Well, I mean, again, it depends on kind of what you're looking at. I just mentioned Corey Dykes uh, from Maryland. He's obviously a pass catching tight end, might play wide receiver at 250? Charlotte, but he's six two. He's six two two fifteen right at this oh, point. Oh, two fifteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I mean, yeah. that, it's, it's it, it depends. I mean, and we could see. You know, look at Chancellor Bruin, You know, as the show. To, you know, I, at nights here at ninety three seven, the ticket. He's not necessarily the biggest guy, but he could pack a punch. Oh yeah, yeah. So He's I mean, rough. there. I, it, you know, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I think your traditional tight end. Yeah, you'd have to add some weight, but that's kind of a, a changing, ever changing position in, in today's football. Well, I'm kind of excited for this whole spring, not spring thing, but when the Nebraska really gets down to fall camp, because now you got. We went from like just having like probably talking about two receivers to now looking at about a uh, uh, a six deep room. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I think mean, the, if, the two if, new guys are, are fitting in well. That's the good report. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you, you you have Malachi and Jaden Dawes and then, and then Lloyd. Yeah. And then you Alex got the two, Bullock still there. Alex Bullock still there. You still got the two guys who's coming in. I mean, I think that the, who's the lost guy in this group? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 ICG? It. Could be. Could be. Um Janarian Bonner, by the way, uh, listed at wide receiver now. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, He's a good receiver. Yeah. But you've had some good reports about some of the young freshmen. That's a position that if, I mean, again, you could, you could come in and, and it's not like offensive line where you don't want to necessarily force a guy in there or, or tied in where you want to add weight. A, a freshman wide receiver could come in and be a top option. But I just really like what I'm hearing about Jamal Banks and, and Nayer. Obviously, yeah. Nayer can kind of take the top off of a defense. And Jamal Banks has a big body, <clears throat> big catch radius, and he's developing a good relationship. Um, with with the uh, with Dylan Riola and in, in, in the quarterbacks there, um, and Nebraska has has had I mean, kind of had you know it's different coaching staffs, so I don't know if it's 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 a, it's a plan, 
but they've had success, I think, in each of the last three years now with a transfer portal wide receiver leading the team as far as wide receivers and in, uh, in receiving yards. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, the thing I want to see, though, is, man, I forgot what. Oh, now I was going to talk about Javon Bonner. You say he went back to tight end. Now, you know why I say because they, they're changing the offense. Mm. This, this, they're going to do Nebraska going to be a four, probably a four. Uh, they're, they're, like on third down, they're going to be like probably a four four receiver set. Yeah. You know, they probably start the game off in a three receiver set with a tight end because of Fedoni. They have to. You know what I'm saying? But we're not – I don't think Nebraska is going to go back to the fullback. Well, and they still got like Baron Leibentritt and Trevor LaRuth on the roster for your kind of tradi- more traditional yeah. fullbacks. And Bonner never really was that. It was it was kind of a – Well, he came in as a receiver too for Mika right, Joseph. Yeah. So, yeah. So, now he is yeah, – they move, kind of just moved him back to wide receiver. But – you know, with those guys, I mean, you could still use them in that way, regardless yeah. of whatever, you know, p- position you want to list them. And that's kind of what we're thinking about with maybe a Bonner or like we talked about with a Carter Nelson, uh, even Heinrich Harburg, if if they want to run some some sets out there like they did last year in the opening game to get him a reception. Um, you know, you, you just have kind of, kind of some athletes, athleticism that can match up uh, against uh, some opponents out there that makes it a tough matchup and, and or at least a surprise for a defense to have to adjust to. I think we're looking at the new Nebraska. I think we spread it out. I mean, if if you can run that running back out of one back set and you get, per, first of all, the offensive line got to be good. I mean, we got to get the offense. Yeah. We have to get the offensive line to, to, to learn the blocking scheme and the running back to learn his line, to know how far he can go out, how far he can go in, where to cut at, you know, they all got to be on the same page. And now we could do it out of one back set because you got to make Dylan Riola happy. First of all, you got to keep him happy. We we know that. You got to yeah. keep him happy because we don't need him hopping in the transfer portal talking about going back to Georgia. That's another, <laughs> that's right. that's another conversation. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, you got to keep him happy. I mean, I think we spread the ball. I mean, you got four good – we got four receivers. I mean, then you you could put a little guy – I don't know, how, how tall is – um. The, the guy from Maryland. I mean, not Maryland. Where is he from? Uh, you're talking about uh, Banks Bank from Wake Forest. Wake Forest yeah. How tall is he? He's six, he goes 6'4", 205. Okay. Yeah. Now, listen to this. How tall is Nia? 6'3", 215. All right. So, you put Banks on one side, little speed guy on the other side. Okay. Bam, bam. You got a big guy. You got a speed guy. Now, on the other side, you could Malachi. And Nair on that side. Malachi is 6'4". Yeah, and he's got his own speed. Yeah, he's got his own speed. Yeah. So, hey, and then, oh, man, let me see. Four. You'd go uh, Nair, Banks, uh, Malachi, and Lloyd. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good four. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow we got to fit for Donny in. No, well, we got to <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's gonna be crazy. I mean, that this, I mean, what Nebraska gonna have to do this year is outplay people. You know, you gonna really have we gonna really have to attack people. We can't sit back and, and and wait for them to mess up. We got to go get them and go attack them, and, and we got to go at teams. Yeah, you know, we got to prove ourselves. I'm, I'm talking about go deep, oh, run yeah. the run the ball efficiently. Make sure we establish a running game. I don't care if you get 98 yards a game. We got to establish some games. We just can't be 348 yards passing and 20 yards rushing. Well, not going to win it like that. With some of those weapons, it might be, it might be, a, you might have to remind your offensive coordinator. Well, you got enough. To keep you got running, yeah, going. you got to run. You got, you got, yeah. you got running backs back there. Yeah. You got two guys who previous started. You got a, a, a sophomore who's coming in with probably three, four starts in them. You got a guy who's coming from Oregon that's probably, might end up winning this thing in the fall. So who knows? And then you got another red shirt guy back there. That's good room. Receivers stacked up. Offensive lines stacked up. Running backs are stacked up. Quarterback room is kind of shady, but hey, I would add one more. Who knows? But well, that's, I, that's my opinion. Again, it, it depends on the way you look at it. I, to me, I'm excited uh, to hear a guy like Mike Mentor, who, you know, obviously coached, you know, head coaching material at, at Campbell. Um, just after a week of watching Dylan Riola be excited about what he can do pre-snap. Cause that tells me, you know, there's a lot of times you watch Nebraska over the years and they might not have never had the greatest quarterback arms or, or this or that, but they just, 
You know, you're yeah. sometimes you're just like, why don't they just throw underneath? Why don't they just take what's there? And if he can pre-snap determine what's there, um, I think that'll make for a much better passing game, not so much going through the motions or locking on one receiver as we've seen qu quarterbacks do in the past or, you know, be quick to say, all right, I'm going to pull it down and run with it. It'll be a different looking offense and with it, with a lot of weapons out there. Um, to be honest, that they're they're kind of, to a degree, uh, just kind of renting Nayer and Banks right out of the transfer portal. Eventually, they got to build that wide receiver unit up, and that's what they're trying to do with those younger guys. But, man, I, I don't think there's probably a happier guy in the state as far as going from running quarterback to passing quarterback than Jalen Lloyd, who was already able to have um, some some highlight-type plays. He obviously needs to get better with the rest of the route tree and, and bringing in the ball and all that. But he's already showed at the Big Ten level um, you give him a quarterback, he's he's going to be a dangerous weapon. So um, they've got some of those younger guys coming up uh, along with the transfer portal. The wide receiver unit looks looks pretty darn good. Oh, it had not looked this stable in years. Yeah. So we'll see. Spring game coming up. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Coach Tony White and Rob Dvorak, the uh, linebacker coach, uh, speaking after practice today. So we might be able to have that throughout the rest of the day here in 93.7 The Ticket. Woo! <laughs> Take us out, Bob. All right, you're listening to the captain here on 93.7 The Ticket. I am Jake Bachman alongside All-American and National Champ Terrell Farley. We'll be back after this. Go home. Barbecue. If the week's been too hectic to even think about dinner, or your family can't handle one more night of leftovers, then it's time to let Hogwild do the cooking. Hogwild's family packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hogwild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. Power Combo BOGO? Huh? Yes. If you purchase an air conditioner, you receive a furnace completely free. At John Henry's, our professionals want to ensure you are comfortable in your home all year long, no matter what Nebraska has to throw at us. Call today to schedule your free estimate and learn more about the free furnace waiting for you. Give John Henry's a call today. 435-5555. John Henry's plumbing. Heating and air. And electrical. Get rid of pesky critters once and for all with Bats to Rats. Their expert team is here to help you reclaim your home. No more sleepless nights caused by crawling critters or flapping wings. Bats to Rats ensures a safe environment for every family member. Check the website at BatsToRats.com for amazing offers. And if you mention this ad, you'll receive $10 off your initial inspection cost. Call Bats to Rats today at 402-781-8691. That's 402-781-8691. Bats to Rats. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. NEPCO is hiring CDL drivers for ready mixed concrete, Husker concrete, and Beatrice concrete. NEPCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEPCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEPCOinc.com. That's N E B C O I N C.com. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. On the block with Strick and Austin. When you're, when you're in New York, Nick, in New York, I mean, you're talking about, you see mafioso types. <laughs> you go into a restaurant and you would literally eat. Hey, come on over here. You know, they, they, you know, I don't know how to say it. I don't got the accent, but they would say, come, come, speak, come on, come over. Have a drink on me. And what are you going to do? Say no. You, you not say you no, don't say no to the drink. <laughs> you say no. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com.
back with Vershawn Jackson, powered by Bauer, on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. <laughs> Here on the Captain on 93.7 The Ticket. Thanks for joining us. This is our final segment, of course, as we get ready for uh, Character Chronicles coming up next here. Uh, so final segment, uh, Terrell, uh, I know that uh, Tony White has started talking to the media. And the first thing that I saw coming out of is uh, Coach Matt Rule had to get on Tony White to get that defense intensity up a little bit more uh, this past Saturday with the scrimmage. Um, scrimmages are always fun. Is there? You would think that would be the time in practice when you're most looking forward to, right, as a player? You want to dominate. You want yeah. to dominate the other side of the ball. I mean, we 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 always knew what day was we was going to butt heads against each other, ones against one, because we did it every week. And um, we sure wanted to go out there and kick their butt, and they wanted to kick our butt. Uh, sometimes it turns into fights out there. So, you know, once you know, once we know we're going against our number ones, we got hype for it. And they should get hyped for it. Defense should always be hyped. Mm. We had that type of team that had those intensity players like that. Like, we wasn't going to go out there and be flat because we had people that can lead this defense. I mean, just playing with the the Peter brothers, how they used to be so intense, playing with Grant Wistrom, just Jared, Jared, Jared um, Thomas. Thomas yeah. It's just those – was the guys who who got it busy? That's that's the guys who's more vocal out there. They will growl and, and 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 you know they did everything to get us pumped. So as a as a unit, you should be ready to dominate, and you should be at that point where you you left off from last year. If you if you want to be number one, you got to come ready every day. Uh, another thing about this defense, and this was kind of talked about with the wide receiver unit with the uh, coach McGuire and and, and the like a couple days ago, but it, it obviously translates to the defense is that they don't play a lot of press coverage. And so the wide receivers are, you know, they're trying to test them out in that in, and it's kind of outside of their, their defensive uh, normality. Obviously you get better playing against your own defense and you know, kind of that system. Um, would you like to see Nebraska play more press coverage? I know it did give their wide receivers a little bit of a, uh, uh, I mean, it's it's just tough. I mean, you're using exerting a lot of energy at the beginning of the play if you're going to up against press, but so is the cornerback. Well, that that's one thing Matt Rule's probably gonna have to do is give that give that off them receivers some time to to play against a a unit that's gonna do that because you're gonna have teams in the Big Ten that's gonna play that's good enough to play man so and, and play up close on you. So it's something they have to practice on individually too. So. You have to get them ready. So that, that's one of the main things we have to be able to do is get off the line of scrimmage. And teams like Colorado, they're going to press us. They're going to they're gonna go man-to-man. They're going to see if you can beat me or not. So, you know, teams are going to – and, you know, Illinois had good cornerbacks where they did that. They did that to Trey Palmer. They shut them yeah. down by playing press on them and left one guy on them. So it's a lot of talented teams out here that can play up on you close that, you know, we got to learn how to do that. I mean, we need to – come out of the spring ball up on it and, and probably need to work on it good in the summertime. So it's something they have to do individually at a, at a, as a group and rob receivers, just, you know, get people up and push them off the line or, or get with the DBs and do one-on-ones and, and make the coach press them every time. So they, they have to learn that to be a good team. And obviously I know when you were at the Packers, they, they moved you to cornerback. Did you as a corner, um, would you rather do press coverage or did you kind yes. of like sitting back? You like press? Yeah. yeah, especially if you're strong. Yeah. So especially if you know how to use your arm and you can jab them good and and, and stay with them because if, if, if you can knock that receiver off their path, they're no good anymore. Yeah. You know, that's one thing about press man is that if that guy knocks you off your route, if he puts his hand on you and you can't get off of him, then you're just sitting there playing pity pat. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll be exciting to see uh, how this team does. Obviously, that cornerback spot opposite Tommy Hill is uh, one of the most intriguing position battles as we lead into spring. I know Bly Hill got a kind of a shout out today. Um, so we'll see. Again, Coach Tony White, defensive coordinator, obviously, uh, and, and and linebacker coach Rob Dvorak uh, speaking at practice. So we'll let you know throughout the day uh, anything that comes out of that. Um, interesting off the text, slider, text line, uh, City Worker says, hopefully guys can give... Uh, Garrett McGuire, some props if they do play good. The wide receiver unit that is 
lots of folks bash that higher. And I, I, I only mentioned that because I thought it was, it was funny. Rob Dvorak, a young man as well. He doesn't get as much as the heat because uh, because Coach McGuire is a little bit younger than him, but it's just by a couple of years. So uh, a couple of the younger guys, uh, you know, trying to, to make their mark. And uh, I think the linebacker unit, as we see this year, will be interesting too. All right. I think we have some stars and supernova tickets available to go away. So you want to? How many we got? Block four. Uh, I don't know because I was out yesterday. I was. Uh, we'll have to. We'll have to do that. Well, apparently it's said by the end of the show Friday, so we've got plenty. Oh, okay. Well, we've got plenty to give away tomorrow. That'll be something uh, to look out for. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll be exciting. I know Supernovas play on Saturday. Stars um, uh, are getting close to playoff season if they're not there yet. So uh, lots of exciting opportunities to win some tickets here. Uh, at 93.7 the ticket which is funny because when you tell have you ever when you tell people you work at 93.7 the ticket do they say oh yeah I, i'd like to get some tickets hook me up with some tickets they think you're a ticket company sometimes well sometimes i'll I be in the gas station and i'll say because i talk to the clerks up there a lot and yeah somebody said hey you the black shirt i said yeah that's me oh mm-hmm. man i can't hear your voice but yeah, Bob, yeah. What, what i was saying earlier is that the d1 council altered altered the transfer rules yesterday afternoon transfers would now be allowed to transfer as many times as they want. So as long as you're eligible, you'll be able to, you know, go to many schools if you want now. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy because, you know, they was going to court about that back yeah. and forth, and they said if they did overrule it, that they would lose a whole year of eligibility. So I, that's happy for the students and kind of sad for the guy from Florida State last year that got – that that was and the other guy that waited what nine eight nine six games for Florida State was that a re- receiver or something? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but I you know, know that's a yeah. that's one of the rules just that that popped up. Yeah, I don't know how long that's going to stay. Like you said, that's kind of just been battling in the courts. That's it, it, it is just another portion of this whole college football model as it currently stands. That seems a little bit unsustainable. Certainly, roster management very difficult in that it's kind of the player's era, I suppose, as far as, as freedom of movement. Um, and so, I don't know. I, I That's just, uh, that's that seems like a headache. <laughs> did, you, did you watch it in, in NBA last night? Yeah, some good NBA I know, I watched night. my Hawks, yeah. man. They was in it for a minute, man. Yeah, Trey yeah. Young, I, well, I, I don't know if Trey Young and the other guy can play together. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that, exp- that experience. Well, Trey, uh, Trey Young, his, his, finger, his finger was messed up, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's been that's part of the kind of the story of these playing games so far. Jimmy Butler yeah. is now going to be out. So MCL. Yeah, whether they be they they're going to play the Bulls and Kobe White, who led the, the with forty two points last yeah. night, uh, definitely helped cook the Hawks there. But they're going to have to do it without uh, without Jimmy. And then uh, also the the Pelicans, who are playing for their spot in the playoffs, are going to do it without Zion Williamson. So I uh, know forty. He injuries. had forty some points. Yeah. Oh man, did did, did you think he, re, he he got his he got his Self back now? Uh, I don't know. There's always, I, I think until the end of his career, we're always going to be discussing his weight. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's just kind of had an injury riddled career at this point. So uh, we'll see. But I mean, the Pelicans definitely took a step forward this year. Man, I tell you what, that was the fastest two hours I've been in this studio ever. The <laughs> yeah, Captain right. Show. Bop. See you Friday. Bob yeah. in the black shirt, the captain show. We are powered by Bauer. Bauer. Infrastructure. Bauer. Underground. Brent. Excavating. Thank you for tuning in to the captain show. 93.7 the ticket. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Ticket is the name. Ticket. Headed to the Hall of Fame. It'll, it'll never be the same. Nah. A team succeeds when they work together. Banking's no different. At UBT, we're in your corner for every...